Well, good morning. Happy Easter as we celebrate the greatest day in the history of the world. Uh, I don't know about you, but today is my Christmas, my New Year, my New Year's Eve, all the, all the holidays that we celebrate put in combined. I had trouble sleeping last night. So excited about Easter. Yeah, it's a little different. Many of us will be spending it in our homes by ourselves or with our families and not being able to get outside and obviously not gathering together as a church. Yet we have so much to celebrate on this Easter. We get to glorify a risen Savior. He has conquered death, hell, and the grave, and we have hope because what he did for us. I so want to thank you for joining us here at the River Holly location. My name is Caleb Combs and I'm the pastor here. And I am so grateful that we get to celebrate Easter together. Whether you're watching live or maybe at another time, we have something to celebrate. And that's Jesus. We as a church are just so grateful For what Jesus did for us. I've talked to so many of you over the last couple days. Just trying to deal with the ups and downs of this really weird. I'm going to use that word probably too much this morning. Weird and unprecedented time. Yet Easter still rings true. Easter still has power. Easter still has authority. What Christ did for us by conquering the grave still reigns true today. It may look a little different. You may not be able to have the Easter egg hunt. You may not be able to have the big meal. You may not be able to have all the family over. But I'll tell you this, this morning, Easter and what Jesus did for us, what we are celebrating still reigns true. This morning, as we celebrate what Jesus has done, I want to go to him together. So we're going we're gonna to pray together and glorify him. And then we'll jump into his or this message this morning. God, we come to you. We just lift you up. We praise you. We just honor you. Thank you for all that you do, all that you are. Thank you for giving us Easter. Thank you for giving us a day we can point to. Thank you for giving us a light shining in the darkness. God, the words just resonate. He is not here. He has risen. Just as he said. Just echo in my heart, in my mind, in my soul today. May those watching hear that, feel that, understand that. But also... May they understand that you did it for a relationship with us. God, I love you. I praise you. I honor you. Thank you for this time. Speak. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. As I was preparing this message this week, excited about Easter, always feel the pressure of trying to be able to make it the greatest message in the history of the world. And then at that moment, I realized it doesn't have to be because what Jesus did for us on that Sunday is the greatest thing in the history of the world. And so my goal for you this morning and my goal for this time is to be able to share it, communicate it. I don't have to do the work. He already did. The message this morning will just be a message of rescue, of authority, of peace, of hope, of encouragement, of love, a message of Jesus. Thinking through this message, use those terms greatest, incredible. And words have a a lot of meaning. Words tend to carry weight. Adjectives in our culture right now seem to be added to everything. I'm an adjective adder. Tend to make them up in a lot of cases, if you know me at all. 
But words are important. Thinking back to some incredible words or words shared to me in my life, I can remember the words, I love you. Walking out of the common area at Grace Bible College, I opened the door and told my then girlfriend, who would then become my wife, I love you. It took her a few days to respond, but that's okay. But an important moment, I can remember when she said it back. I can remember when the doctor handed me a little boy and said, Dad, it's a boy. And I met my son Carter for the first time. I can remember my wife at our wedding day. I guess I probably should have reversed those because the wedding day happened first. Saying, I do. I can remember a doctor handing me a little girl. Saying, Dad, it's a girl. And there I met my daughter, Colby. I can remember different words that have been shared all my life. Incredible, life-altering words. Life-changing words. You can probably think to yourself and remember and think about moments that, yes, some good, some bad, but these moments, these words, you can almost articulate them out of your mouth in the exact feeling, response, everything that came with these words. This morning, I want to give you the three most important words in the history of the world. Words that are just so incredible. You have authority and peace, freedom. I don't want to discredit any of those life-altering words you've heard or can remember, but I'll tell you this. After this message this morning, I believe these three words will become or should become the greatest three words in the history of your life and my life in the entire world. In John chapter 19, we look at John recording and communicating the death of Jesus. We just honored that and commemorated that death on Good Friday. If you didn't get a chance to stream or watch the Good Friday gathering we did, it was incredible. It was Beautiful, it showed unity. We had all six of our location pastors together here as we were able to honor Jesus Christ and what he did for us on Good Friday. But in John chapter 19, it's now come towards the end where Jesus was getting ready to give up his life. And John records three words. I'm going to start in verse 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst, which we did a couple weeks ago. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, These are the words of Jesus. It is finished. He bowed his head and gave up his spirit. But I want to focus on those three words this morning. It is finished. Powerful words. Words that Jesus declared or proclaimed. He didn't whisper them. He didn't... Mumble them. He didn't skip over them. The words, the final words of Jesus on the cross, it is finished. Well, what is it? Yeah, we realize Jesus has now just laid down his life. His life was 
now finished. Or so those watching or putting him to death thought. But it is finished. The term that Jesus spoke was to tell us thy or it is finished. That word only occurs twice in the entire Bible. John 28, 1928 and John 1930. This word to tell us thy or t tell us thy. It's an important word for us to understand, an important word for you and I to understand in our lives. English translates it into three words. It is finished. But this word was commonly used as a debt or a sentence. But when Jesus declared, it is finished, or te telestai, he brought something to completion. He ended something. He paid something. Jesus, on that Good Friday, declared with his last breaths on the cross, Titelestai, it is finished. But what did he finish? Well, you need to understand this morning and comprehend what Jesus finished. Jesus finished something that you and I will be forever grateful. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. I want to pause there because you and I need to understand one thing. We all have this thing called sin in our life. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's every one of us. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. We have to understand, we have to comprehend, we have to even personalize ourselves, put our sins on what Jesus was doing, what he was finishing. When we were born, we were born into this thing called sin. We all were given this thing called sin or flesh. We were born into it. And automatically had a debt. And that debt was death. Every single person other than Jesus was born into this debt that they owed. And with that death came death. Separation from God. Yet God in his great mercy, in his great love said, I want to fill. I want to pay. I want to take care of your debt. The greatest words in the history of the world to tell us that it is finished. Colossians 2.13 and you who were dead in your trespasses or you who were dead in your sin or your faults or your failures. Yeah, that's all of us. God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. If you see that, okay, there's forgiveness. But he shows us how by canceling the record of our debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. We see this beautiful picture of paid in full. We see this picture of it is finished. Jesus paid our debt. He took care of our debt. He covered our debt. He took his debt on himself. He who knew no sin became sin 
for you and I. So that we could have the righteousness of God. We can have a a relationship with God. Sin is a separator. Jesus is a unifier. Jesus brought us together. Jesus, through his death and resurrection, gave you and I an opportunity for life. You see, back in Roman times, When someone was convicted of a crime, there was no due process at that point. It was, all right, we see someone doing this crime, we're going to throw them into a prison cell. And they would put their charge on a piece of paper outside the prison cell. And they would put the sentence that they owed. They would say their name what they did, and how long they have, whether it was stealing, you fill in the blank. And when their time or when their sentence was completed, they would stamp on the front of that sentence outside of the cell. They would open the cell. The person would walk out free and they would stamp to tell us that it is finished or paid in full. Well, Easter is Jesus carrying us out of that prison cell. You see, my name's on my prison cell Caleb Combs, my crime is sin. And my sentence is death. Yet on that Easter morning, I need you to hear this this morning. On that Easter morning, Jesus walked out victorious and gave me the opportunity To then, when I was able to walk out of my cell free, as a free man, not deserving it on my own, because Jesus said, I will take your death, I will take your sentence, I will take your punishment on my cell so that you can walk free. To tell us, I paid in full, it is finished. So when Jesus from the cross with all authority proclaimed Jesus with all knowing, Jesus with all the sin of the world on himself said, it is finished, I've taken care of it. You have to understand that this morning. You have to grasp that. These three words or that word, this statement is the greatest statement in the history of the world. Your debt has been paid, paid in full. It is finished. As we see our sentence or our obligation or our debt, Jesus said, I've taken care of it. I've nailed it to the cross. And you have to understand that this morning. You have to grasp that this morning. You have to understand the brevity and the importance of that in your life. What's incredible is those words or that word or that statement is pointing to all throughout the Bible. The entire word of God points to it is finished. It it points to God desiring a relationship with you. It points to God saying, I desire, I love you. I want to have a relationship with you. I've taken care of your debt. All you have to do is receive that debt. I had a little fun this week. And and wrote down some of the Old Testament ways that point to the coming time where Jesus would say, it is finished. Genesis points to God's sovereign love, God's 
creation pointing to desiring a relationship with you and I. Exodus, the law was written so he could come to fulfill it. Numbers calls Jesus the second Adam and that he will come with perfection. Joshua talks about Jesus being our guide and he'll never leave you or forsake you. Ezra says he is faithful. Nehemiah calls Jesus the rebuilder. Psalms, he's the the great shepherd. And when you're walking in the shadow of death, he will not leave you. Proverbs, all wisdom and knowledge come from him. Isaiah told us the cross would heal our sickness of sin. Amos tells us he will carry our burdens. Obadiah, he's our mighty savior. Ezekiel called him the son of man, where he, the almighty God, would humble himself, be born in a manger, and some 33 years later would give his life as a ransom, as a debt, as a covering for you and I. Ezekiel called him the son of man. Daniel foretold of the coming reconciliation or the payment of sin by Jesus. Hosea called him the bridegroom. Jonah, the forgiving God. Zechariah, the pierced son to what Jesus would be pierced for you and I. And Malachi calls him the son of righteousness. The whole earth, the whole writing of God's word points to these words. It is finished, paid in full. When Jesus declared and proclaimed at that moment, paid in full, I've taken care of your debt. I've done it. I've taken it on myself. Now all you have to do is receive it. See, Romans 10, 9 says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, we celebrate what Jesus did for us. We celebrate The authority, we celebrate the freedom, we celebrate it. We can proclaim my debt was paid in full. It was taken care of. And you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. We celebrate Easter. Why? Because Jesus is who he says he is. Jesus did what he said he'd do. Jesus took your and I's debt and Nailed it to the cross. In Matthew chapter 28. Now after the Sabbath, and that's Saturday, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Sunday, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came And rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning. And his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John record the exact 
moments of the resurrection, but every book of the Bible proclaims the resurrection of Jesus. And so I ask you this morning, do you understand the importance of Jesus proclaiming to tell us die? It is finished. Do you understand what that it is? It's our debt, it's our payment, it's our obligation that sin has caused in our lives. That Jesus took it upon himself and said, I, I will take it. I need you to understand when Jesus said it is finished, do you understand why? Do you understand how it works into your life if you've never received that payment in your life? You need to this morning. See, what happens is this moment can cause fear just as Matthew 28 said, but the guard said, do not fear, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified, but now he's alive. I ask you this morning, do you seek Jesus? Because he is seeking a relationship with you. Real, authentic, beautiful, intimate relationship. So when he said it is finished, I've taken your debt. Do you receive it? The Bible's clear. He did it, but will you receive the gift? Romans 10, 9 was clear. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Those two steps. You're like, well, I'm not with a pastor this morning. I'm not sure what that even looks like. You know what? It's that simple, confessing your sin, confessing that you are a a failure, confessing that you have this punishment of death and believing in your heart that God has died for your sins and raised from the dead. You will be saved. And so I ask you, it is finished. Do you understand it? Do you grasp it? Do you you really live by it? And that's what I'll ask you. Maybe you're a believer and you're saying, you know, I've already given my life to Jesus. But do you live in a way, in a manner, free from the debt of your sin? Or do you, and, and, and like me, do we chain ourselves back up and say, you know what, I am a sinner, I, I, I have this. No, we as believers can say, I can walk free, I can walk out of my cell, my, my sentence, my crime, my obligation has been posted outside of my cell and people see it. Yet when God stamped it, it is finished. We can walk out free and free indeed we can live. And that's the beautiful story of Easter. This morning I woke up about 5.15. I thought to myself, man, as the Bible says, just before dawn, the earth shook. The stone was rolled away. So was it about this time? You see, I, I'm so excited about Easter, not for the eggs, not for the outfits, not for Anything else other than the statement that we get to celebrate, it is finished. But we should be able to celebrate that every single day of our lives as we open our eyes and take our head off our pillows and live our lives. Whether that's in quarantine or when we go back to our our jobs and our, our normal lives, whatever normal is. Do we live a life of it is finished. Jesus took my debt and nailed it to the cross. If you don't know it, you don't know him, make today the day by simply calling upon the name of the Lord. You will be saved. Maybe this morning you've already been saved and you need to understand 
really needed to live a life of, of my debt was paid in full because I'm tired of watching the enemy drag believers down and saying, oh, you know what, are you sure your debt was paid? No, today may you walk away with the confidence and the understanding and you can proclaim to the enemy just as Jesus Christ did on the cross, my debt is paid. And you can point to what Jesus did. God, I come to you this morning. I know there's somebody watching that does not know you. It's never really understood. It is finished. Three greatest words or the greatest statement in the history of the world. It is finished. Paid in full. God, thank you for what you did for me. God, may they understand that they did it and you did it for them. May they comprehend it as you seek a relationship with them. God, speak into their heart right now. May they confess their sins to you and believe in their hearts and that they will be saved. God, I thank you for Easter. I thank you for taking my debt. I thank you for dying and raising again so that I can have hope in Jesus Christ. God, I love you. I praise you. I honor you. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. Jesus' wonderful name, we celebrate. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Easter Sunday morning. If we can be a blessing to you, encourage you. You let us know. Maybe you, you received Jesus Christ this morning or you have more questions. There's a moderator right on there. You can also text River Hope, no space, to 97000. There on there you can click. A link will be sent to you. You can say, hey, I've received Jesus Christ. Or I just have questions. If we can help you with that, we'd love to help you. And when all this is over, I'd love to meet you personally. I'd love to shake your hand, give you a hug, celebrate. And maybe we'll, set, we'll schedule some baptisms the first day we can all gather together. So we celebrate Easter every time we gather, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. I love you, church. Thanks so much for joining us. I wish I could see you face to face, but soon, hopefully. I love you. Have a wonderful day.